Hi there, John McAdams here with you again. In this video, I'm going to do another ballistic gel test. Specifically, I'll test out this 300 blackout ammo from Winchester's PowerPoint line with a 150 grain PowerPoint bullet. Now I will shoot it from this Diamondback DB15 AR15 in 300 blackout, 16 inch barrel, Banish backcountry suppressor. Now, due to the slower velocity of this cartridge, and indeed this particular load, and the fact that most people are probably going to be using it at closer range, I will shoot this ammunition into gel blocks 50 yards away. And, as always, I will measure velocities with my Garmin chronograph. So, let's get shooting, see how it does. Okay, let's take a look at how this bullet performed in gel in detail. Neck is a little longer than I like to see, just over an inch, but still not bad. But my goodness, look at that wound cavity. It is very impressive, both wide and long. That wound cavity extends to about the 12 inch mark before it finally tapers out. Bullet penetrates in a straight line through the rest of that gel block, but it deflects in the second gel block quite a bit, as you can see, and it finally comes to rest there about the 22 and a half inch mark in the second gel block. So pretty good penetration and an excellent wound cavity. Let's pull that bullet out, get some more information about it. Okay, so I pulled that bullet out of the block, took the necessary measurements. First off, original bullet weight, 150 grains. I put this one on the scale, it now weighs 139.6 grains. So it lost a little bit of mass, but that's still 93% weight retention. Next, original bullet diameter was 0 0.308 inches. This one now measures 0.514 inches at the widest point. That's just over one and a half times bullet expansion, or about 1.67 times the original diameter to be exact. It looks like the front one third or front one quarter of the bullet broke off and fragmented. There's a little bit of expansion otherwise, but it's not typical performance. But just because it does not look like a typical expanded bullet doesn't mean it can't still be effective though. Now going back to the gel, this wound track has a longer neck than I like to see, but it's still not terrible. Otherwise, this is a very impressive wound cavity though that is both wide and long, especially considering the sedate on paper ballistics of this load and its pretty slow velocity. And my velocity was just a tiny bit less than advertised. And in the grand scheme of things, 20 to 30 feet per second of muzzle velocity won't make hardly any difference at all a field. To be quite candid with you, I was pleasantly surprised with how this load performed in gel, and it caused a larger wound cavity and penetrated better than I expected. Now, the 300 blackout is sometimes compared to the 3030. The 3030 is indeed more powerful on paper, but it is also primarily, not exclusively, but primarily available in lever action rifles, and the 3030 also has more recoil than the 300 blackout. It doesn't have terrible recoil at all, but it still certainly has more recoil than the 300 Blackout. Now, if an AR or a bolt action rifle like the Ruger American Ranch is more your speed than a lever action rifle, then the 300 Blackout might fit the bill for you. Be sure to check out my other video where I test the 3030 Winchester in gel with Hornady Lever Evolution ammo to get an idea of how that 3030 load performs and you can see for yourself how this particular 300 blackout load stacks up against that 3030 load. If you are interested, I could do a more detailed comparison of the 3030 and the 300 blackout in the future. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see me do that. Your mileage may vary, but all in all, I'm very pleased with the performance of this ammunition at first glance. I'm definitely impressed, and I think this is a load that deserves more study from me and potentially more consideration from you if you have a 300 blackout that you want to hunt game like deer and or feral hogs with at closer range, say inside 100, 125 yards or so. Based on the performance of this ammo in gel, you should get enough penetration to reach the vitals of deer-sized game from most reasonable shot angles. 
there's also a good chance the bullet will exit too. And that large and long temporary wound cavity will cause significant damage to the vital organs of an animal when it reaches them. This is exactly what we all want for fast, clean, ethical kills. The 300 Blackout gets a lot of hate in some circles for being inadequate for deer-sized game. But I think this gel test is a good example of how the cartridge can actually perform surprisingly well as long as you use the right ammo and don't try to stretch your shooting distances out too much. If you enjoyed this video and you want more content along these lines, visit huntingguns101.com or click the link in the video description. Sign up there to get a free ebook on the best hunting calibers. I also cover this stuff in even more detail in my premium Hunting Guns 101 training. Link is also in the video description. That training also contains a thorough overview of external and terminal ballistics, so you will learn how bullets actually kill animals, as well as some specific examples of rifles and scopes ideally suited to a variety of hunting situations. You'll also discover the various factors that affect bullet penetration and expansion, and you'll learn a couple different methods of choosing the ideal cartridge bullet combination for a hunt that will deliver ideal terminal performance on whatever game you are hunting. Subscribers to my premium Hunting Guns 101 training will also receive access to my extensive and growing library of ballistic gel test results, most of which are not on YouTube. That library has gel test results for multiple different popular hunting loads for cartridges like the 223 Remington, 6.5 Grendel, 6.5 Creedmoor, 6.5 PRC, 270 Winchester, 7mm Rim Mag, 7mm PRC, 300 Blackout, 308 Winchester, 30 on 6 Springfield, and 300 Win Mag, among others. Once again, this list is always growing. I have also done ballistic gel tests with actual deer and elk shoulder blades embedded in the gel to give you an idea of how impacting bone affects the performance of different bullets as well. And those gel test results demonstrate the wide spectrum of results you can expect from different cartridges and bullets that you can use to tailor your hunting load to the specific situation. Once again, more details on all of that are available at the link in the video description. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and good hunting.